Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. <clears throat> On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, a rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines stained, strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It would be said on that day, look, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord from whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. The psalm for this morning is 118, verses 1 through 2, 14 through 17. It can be found in your bulletin and in your prayer books on page 760. Let us read it responsibly by half verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. 
Let all now proclaim. The Lord is my strength and my song. There was a sound of exaltation and victory. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the people of Corinth. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, here is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement. Amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable to you. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. It 
So I got an email from Ed Upshaw, and he said it was okay that I could share it with you all. Right, Ed? Okay, good. So here it is. He had a question about Easter and about symbols, and that how did we come to have a cross as our symbol? How is that showing new life? And did, uh, were there other symbols at other points in the church history? And he asked specifically about the fish. And so that got into an interesting discussion, and so I'm going to tell you a little more about these type of symbols. So first things first, hello, Father Fred, the fish. I'm not used to having somebody sit here, and it's just great to have, all right, so the fish. This was one of the early symbols of the church. In fact, there are excavations of churches and of religious houses that held services inside where they had images of a fish. And so we have that, so... Can you guys hold on to that for me? I may use it later. And it's heavy, isn't it? That would be a nice catch. So I, I haven't caught one of those yet, I'm trying. But uh, so that was one of the first images of the church. And if you look at catacombs and other things, you will find that they were using a fish as the symbol of the church. And it might seem strange to us. Of, can you hold it back up so everybody can see it? This might be a strange symbol for us to see as a symbol of Christianity, unless you were a part of the movement in the early church that had what's known as, or what I call, divine trickery and the hook of Christ. Divine trickery and the hook, as in fishing, of Christ. And so divine trickery. In the Old Testament, there are stories that involve trickery. And one of the first stories is with the snake who tricked Adam and Eve. Do you know the story? All right, so uh, they were tricked into eating the fruit that they were not supposed to, and that caused uh, what many would call a downfall. So when they ate of the fruit of the tree of good and evil, they were tricked into it, and then many things happened. The first thing is that they had shame, and it's the first time in human history, if you will, if you will call that history, the first time humans felt shame. Number two, they felt distant from God. They felt separated from each other. And fourth, they were separated from creation. So by this one trickery, you have people separated from each other, people feeling shame, separated from God, separated from, from creation. And so when God came into the garden that afternoon and go for his walk, you don't have to hold it up that long, it's, but I appreciate it. That's right. <laughs> Lennon's like, come on, this is heavy. <laughs> You're doing great. Uh, so when, the, when God came in to walk through the garden, they weren't there, they were hiding, and God calls out one of the saddest things in the entire Bible. Where are you? Calls God, where are you? So the punishments listed for this act of trickery. The snake got his punishments. And then I'm going to tell you what happened both to Eve and then to Adam. And I have to tell you, it's difficult for me to talk about this in light of uh, the, the shootings that happened in Atlanta. It's hard to talk about this. Um, but what Genesis tells us is that um, you shall desire your husband and he shall rule over you. And, and the church has run with that in really bad and wrong ways for way too long. But that's what's written. Secondly, to Adam he looked and he said, you will toil on the land by the sweat of your face. You shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of you are taken, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The idea that uh, land is going to rule over Adam and Adam is now going to rule over Eve. It is a complete upset of the beauty of what had happened, of perfect relationship with one another, perfect relationship with God, perfect relationship with creation. All of that has been turned upside down. So that's the first trickery. There were several others, but the one that I want to talk about, the one that makes me smile, is uh, you've heard of the phrase, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. If we were to go by firstborns, it would be God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Esau. But it's not Esau, it's Jacob. 
Why? Because Jacob tricked his dad Isaac into giving the blessing that goes to the firstborn son. He tricked him in giving it to him. So I'm a secondborn son. Any secondborn sons or daughters? That's it? Oh, come on, there have to be more than us. Right. Oh, thank you, good. Whew. Yes. Can you believe that you wouldn't get the blessing that nowadays things are divided equally, right? Yeah, Lennon, you are way down on the list. So, <laughs> yeah. That the way it would work, Lennon, with your parents, is that they would bless the oldest son, give him everything, and you would get nothing. Does that sound fair? Okay. All right. well, <laughs> well, it didn't sound fair to Jacob. So Jacob, dressed as if he was Esau, went into his dad Isaac. On his deathbed, Isaac is going blind. He can't see. He reaches out, touches the fur of an animal, thinking it's the fur of Esau's arm, because apparently he was hairy. Um, I don't call him Harry, because I've had kids say, who in the heck is this Harry? I'm like, no, that's not his name. It's... Anyway, so, uh, so Esau was tricked. Jacob got the firstborn blessing. That's why it's God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But that's, that's not where the trickeries end. Because some of you are smiling because you know what happened when Jacob got married. Some of you know this. So uh, what happened is Jacob found the woman that he loved. Her name is Rachel. And then he decided and came into an agreement that he would marry Rachel by working for seven years for Rachel's dad. And then on the big wedding, everything's awesome. There's an organ. There was an organ back then. But I just imagine Dale playing, and it's great music. And so he marries her, and he lifts the veil off the woman of the love of his life, and he got tricked. It was Rachel's oldest sister, Leah. And so then he looked at his father-in-law, and his father-in-law said, how about seven more years, and then you can marry Rachel? So the trickster got tricked. Out of that odd relationship, we have the 12 tribes of Israel. It's hard to imagine how it would have happened any other way. But through this trickery, now there's plenty of other stories of trickery. And where it comes into in the New Testament is the theology of the first century and the second century as the church is starting to grow and the church is starting to spread. They had some questions, and this is how they envisioned what in the world happened with Jesus? They were still trying to figure out uh, why was he crucified, what happened on Holy Saturday, and then Easter Sunday. What happened? And there are images of Jesus in those days, of him uh, bursting out of the tomb, and on uh, the rope on his robe, he has some keys. And it shows that he was unlocking the prison that he went down into. And so this is a, a greater interpretation of that theology divine trickery, that God loves all that God has made, all of them. And some of God's children have been disobedient and have fallen away and have landed in prison called Sheol. God is who God is, and God can't get to Sheol. That God of all goodness, God of all love, God of all grace and forgiveness can't enter that place. So how is God going to do it? How is God going to rescue and get all of God's children and bring everything back together? By divine trickery, that's how. Divine trickery. So we'll have Jesus arrested. We'll have him crucified. And while he's on the cross, placing all the sins of humanity on Jesus. Why? God so loved the world that he sent his only son, not to condemn the world, but that the world will live. So on Jesus, the sins were placed, and that allowed him to send down to the dead or to Sheol, divine trickery. That's how God got there. And once he's there, the tradition is that on Holy Saturday, uh, he took the hook of Christ, love, and he started hooking all of the children that were there, all of God's kids that were there, and um, started pulling on the rope, and up they would go, up out of the prison. Paul writes about, uh, where is the sting of death? Where are you? Because Christ has completely changed all of this. That he went down with divine trickery, and he opened up the gates with the divine hook with the hook of Christ to bring others up. 
And so in Christ, there are no Jews or Greeks. In Christ, there are no male or female people. We are all one in Christ. By this act, he is now reworking everything that happened to Adam. And so Paul wrote in his letter to the Corinthians about how <clears throat> sin entered the world through one man, Adam, and that through one man also it has all been restored or put back together again. And so if you look at what Christ did, you'll see that in the letter to the Romans and letter to Corinthians and other letters, we have in baptism that we put on the robe of Christ. That baptism washes us clean and we put on the robe of Jesus. And so Adam and Eve, who were hiding in shame and made their own clothes, Jesus has now reworked this so that we wear the robe of Christ in our baptism. And two of God's kids are about to be robed in that as well. And so God started to rework this. In the first and the second century, there were women that were running every aspect of the church and that no longer men had power over women, but that women were now doing things within the church, that God was reestablishing that order. And they started to be concerned about creation and starting to put things back in order around creation itself. And so if you can hold that fish up one more time. So the fish, where in the world did the fish come from? In the Old Testament, most of the leaders are shepherds. And so it would make sense in the New Testament that Jesus would call shepherds to lead the flock. But he called fishermen. He called those who would go out and fish. In fact, he told uh, Peter, he said, if you follow me, you, won't along, you will no longer fish. You will become fishers of humans or fishers of souls or fishing with love. And that's what the church did through acts of hospitality, through acts of forgiveness, of grace, and of love, the hook of Christ was sent out into the community. And that more were baptized and forgiven and taken away all of that and given the robe of Christ. That others were, <clears throat> were blessed and sanctified. And the fish is a symbol of this very act, of going out and gathering of the hook of Christ bringing others in. And so that is the call of the early church, is to welcome and to receive, to forgive and to love. And so on Monday, Thursday, we hear about the mandate. We hear that it is to love one another, love one another. And that is our call. That is the hook of us as fisher people, to go out and to love and to forgive one another to love God with all of our heart and to love our neighbors as ourselves and to forgive. And this makes us much different in the world. And so the last thing that Jesus did was he got his friends together around a table and he took bread. Remember how Adam had to toil for bread? Remember how he had to sweat and he had to work really hard to get bread? Jesus said, I am the living bread. I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. You that eat will never be hungry again. And so Jesus is reworking those things that went against Adam by being the living bread, the one that you don't have to work for, the free gift of God's grace and love that comes to us as a gift. And so as fellow fishers, we are called now to take the joy of Easter, of the empty tomb, the symbol of the fish, and to bring it out into the world that needs it. Right now in Manatee County, we are sitting on a very dangerous ecological matter, one that could wipe out fishing and all sorts of things. And it's up to those that follow in the empty tomb to restore creation. It's us that are facing a world with shootings, with violence against women, violence against different genders and races. This is the world that we are called out into, the ones that we are sent with the hook of Christ and with love to go out and to spread the good news. So go out and love. Love one another. 
forgive one another, and let us con con continue this tradition of fishing, of bringing the hook of Christ to all that we meet. So who wants to be baptized? Excellent, good. So I'm going to ask this family to stand. I'm going to have all of you sit for a little while. Uh, what we're going to do while they're beginning to stand is that um, we are going to have a baptism today. Uh, Alden and Harper are going to be baptized. And uh, they're both turning 11 in June. Congratulations, that's wonderful. And so you can stand too, Lynn. That's fine. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so the baptismal font is outside, they're inside, we're all inside. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to do the beginning of the service here, and then when I process out with the family to, for the baptism, magically the TV will roll in as I'm leaving, and through the magic of Zoom and Ethan's camera, you will then see us outside and hopefully hear us. And so uh, you can stay where you are and you will watch, and then uh, when we come back in, the TV will scoot back, and then we'll continue the rest of our service here. I think. <laughs> that's, what, that's the plan. That's what we're going to try to do. So, um, are you all ready? The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. Alden and Harper, do you desire to be baptized? I do. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. In congregation, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these children and their life in Christ? We will. Please stand and with Alden and Harper who are being bound to Christ and let us now renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people, and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Let us now pray for Alden and Harper who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. 
Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Send Alden and Harper into the world and witness to your love. And bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come in glory who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Here we go to process. We thank you, Almighty God, for the water of baptism. Now sanctify this water, we pray, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again, they continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. marked by the power of the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. You are anointed in the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon Alden and Harper the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Together, let us welcome these newly baptized saints. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Amen. Congratulations.
Please be seated. So welcome to All Angels, and thank you for all coming out and being here. Um, for some of you saw that uh, Lou had fallen as she was coming in. Uh, Lou was taken um, by uh, car off to an urgent care for her to be looked at. But she said hi to me, and she was smiling, setting up in the car. But thank you for your concerns. We'll be praying for her during our Holy Communion as well. So uh, thank you all for being here. And choir, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Chilly. Chilly. <laughs> I would like to trade spots with you. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you for being here and for uh, giving us the gift of music and for uh, our mission is to bring the living Christ to those inside and those outside the church. And you are both inside and outside, uh, Beverly and, and Dale and everybody else in here and you all out there. It is wonderful. So thank you for your gift of music and for singing. And Kai, thank you. It's wonderful. So round of applause for them. Thank you. Now we're going to see if we can have an organ inside and singers outside, and if it'll work. I think by God's grace it will. So um, for communion, we will be having three communion stations, and we're doing bread only. Uh, one station will be at this door, another station will be at that door, and the third one will be outside. And so we will be offering communion. If you've been baptized in any Christian tradition, you're welcome to receive the bread by putting your hands together like this. You then can eat the bread, uh, or if you would like a blessing, just let one of us know, and uh, we will do a blessing with you. And if you've always wanted to be baptized, I've got some water that's ready to go, so we can do that right now. <laughs> so it's wonderful. Uh, thank you for our ushers. A special thanks to our altar guild, who for Holy Week, we could have done none of this. And thank you for the flower guild and the altar guild and all of the volunteers who transform the church into this array of beauty that we have of new life. So thank you all for all that you do. Um, we have uh, the rest of your announcements in your bulletin. As the church and as we begin to end through this tail end of the pandemic, uh, be watching for what we will be doing with fellowship and also with outreach and be watching as we continue to bring the living Christ to those inside and those outside the church. So let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you and to give you thanks for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Lord our God, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom and to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died for us and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring the fulfillment of the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup 
may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy and universal and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, preserve us in peace. Remember all who minister in your church. Remember those who protect us both at home and abroad. Remember those who have ongoing health concerns, especially Downs the Fourth, Holden, and Brian. Remember all who are going through cancer treatments, especially Jenny, Victoria, Andres, Alex, Colleen, Jack, Connie, John, Douglas, and Tom. Remember this day, Lou and Victoria. Remember all who are under the, the, kill, the care of skilled nursing, especially Bob, Timothy, Don, Barbara, and Mike. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal light and of joy. And grant that we may find our inheritance with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Together, let us pray. Grant, we beseech thee, almighty God, that through thy grace, the words which we have heard this day may be grafted inwardly in our hearts and bring forth in us the fruit of good living and the gifts of your kingdom to the honor and praise of thy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And before the blessing, I'm going to invite our newly baptized to please come this way. All right, follow me. So this is a special candle. We bring it out for Easter, and it's the light of Christ that shines in our way. Uh, you now have the light of Christ shining upon you and within you and through you, and the command is for you to love one another. So we have two candles that both have the alpha and the omega. Do you see how they look very similar? Yes. Smaller, though, so you can put them in your car. But yes, so they, they're like that. The idea of this is that you've been baptized on Easter. And so for Easter 2022, uh, I would like you to light these candles and to remember today and the cold water and the smell of the oil. Do you smell that on your head? Yeah. And the, yeah. So I want you to remember all of that. So uh, I'm now going to light these. We're going to do the blessing. And then we're going to process outside. And if you can process with me holding these candles, that would be great. And I apologize in advance if you get oil, I mean, uh, hot wax on you. So hold on to that, and then go stand next to the, the lilies right up front. Very good. And I'm gonna stand in between you. All right, good, thank you. And the blessing, please stand. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and all those you love forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.